we've got our okra and we've cut it got probably maybe a couple of quarts here but a quart to two quarts we're going to start with our mixture that we have to boil first we're adding our salt and this is a kosher salt that we use for canning and you don't want to use um, iodized salt it will turn your water cloudy I just talked to the old Alabama gardener a little while ago and he gave me all his little tips so I'm going to pass them on to you if you use iodized salt it, the water will turn cloudy in your jars so lots of times we use non-iodized sea salt but today I'm going to use our kosher salt and we have to have two tablespoons We're going to be using apple cider vinegar. You can use white vinegar, but white vinegar is a little strong for me. I like the taste of the apple cider vinegar better. And if you have your own vinegars that you've made, as long as it's about 5%, should be okay. So we're going to do six uh, tablespoons. We're going to do six tablespoons. We've got our salt and our vinegar, and we're going to turn this on because we're, we're going to want this to boil. And I'm going to add, right now we're going to add water. This is a two cup measuring cup, so I'm going to add ten and a half cups of water to this to have the right mixture. Okay, this holds two cups. Okay, we have our 10 and a half cups of water, our two tablespoons of salt, and six tablespoons of vinegar. We're going to bring this to a boil, and we're going to add our okra. So now we have our water is boiling, we're going to add our okra. Eight minutes we're going to start joy jarring them up in our hot jars and we're going to keep the boiler boiling we're going to keep it boiling while we jar it up so that it stays at the same temperature because this is the only process that we're going to do we are not going to be hot water bathing and we are not going to be pressure canning this is the vinegar and the salt will preserve this and so we're going to be boiling for eight minutes. It's been eight minutes and we're going to start jarring our okra. I've got my jars hot in boiling water. The okra has been boiling and we put it in hot. And you don't want to overboil your okra, but you do want to keep it hot to this temperature until you can put it in the jar and you don't want to overpack the jar but you want to have enough in there and kind of bump it down it's all really pretty hot and I think that's going to be as much as I can get we need the juice so you fill the jar and normally you would fill to like a half 
or something, but this one, with this, you fill almost all the way to the rim. You can go as much as a quarter because you're not going to be processing this anymore. And you want to fill all the space you can fill. And the old Alabama gardener uses vinegar to wipe the rim. So that should take off any substance we have. And then you cap it. And tighten it really hard. And sit it over to the side. And you should hear it ping in shortly. And this is kind of like a blanching process. The eight minutes keeps it from um, kind of kill. The eight minutes of blanching kind of kills the enzymes, lets them keeps them from performing. I guess you would say. And that way, it will preserve better in the jar. If for some reason these do not seal in the next little bit when they start cooling off, we will go ahead and eat them by tomorrow. But if they seal, you take the outer ring off tomorrow and they'll and put your labels on them, mark them, and they're ready to store. And talking to the old Alabama gardener, he had some that was done in 2012. This is 2016. He said it's just as good as when he put them in there. So, there you have it. Can I zoom in? Three jars of okra ready for frying in the future. Tonight we're going to try our okra that we've canned. We did this on 8-24. I'm going to open this jar, drain the juice out of it. I'm going to coat it in my cornmeal that I've added salt to, and then we're going to fry it. I've put just a little bit of um, peanut oil in there and it's heating up so it'll be good and hot when I get ready to cook my okra. So now I've coated my okra in cornmeal and I add a little salt to my cornmeal so I don't have to salt it afterward. This is the way the old Alabama gardener told me how to can okra so we tried his way. He said you're either gonna like it or you don't like it. So we're gonna see how we like okra fried after it's been canned. As you can see, the sofa seems to be frying up really well. The batter is holding. The batter is holding really well. It's already starting to brown. It's not sticking together. I mean, that's just, it looks awesome. If it tastes as good as it looks, we will be canning okra from now on. Okay guys, this is my pan of okra that I just got through frying. Isn't that beautiful? And I had to taste. The cook always has to taste of it. This okra is fine. We're going to find out what Daniel thinks in a minute, but oh my goodness. We will be canning okra. Okay, so we're going to be trying some of Old Alabama Gardener's okra uh, that's been canned. He told us this was the best fried okra you'll ever have. We canned some. 
let it set for about two or three weeks. Wanda has fried it. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna try it and, and just to see how I, you know, see uh, what kind of how I feel about it. Wow, very crunchy. I like that. And I can look at it and tell you the batter has stuck to it a lot better because normally we have some issues with the batter. But now this, the batter is stuck to it it's really well. And when I put it in my mouth, it has the best crunch to it. So, um, oh yeah. And the taste is superb. From this point on, I can tell you most of our okra will probably be canned in jars. We're not going to be putting any more of it in the freezer because if it's going to come out tasting like this, I don't need to put anything in the freezer. I, I'm, I'm much more satisfied with this than I am with it being in the freezer. So I love it. So it's a thumbs up, Mr. Charles from Old Alabama Gardener.